Okay, now this next bit is a bit personal. Many years ago, there was a boxer in Hackney called simply The Gifted One. Kirkland Lang was his real name. Now, few doubt that he is one of the greatest ever talents in British boxing history. Kirk fought as a professional from 1975 until 1994. He was 40 when he finally walked away from the prize ring. He won and lost British and European titles, but never got a shot at a world title. He did, however, beat a peak, yes, a peak, Roberto Duran in 1982. A year later, Duran was getting three million quid for three million dollars for winning a world title, and Kirk was still celebrating. Mad story, but true. He was a great fighter. However, he suffered a bit when he quit the ring. Drugs, bad company and drink, and he was in a coma at one point, and he literally vanished off the scene. Well, he's still alive, and a guy called Ollie Jarrett tracked him down, and during the last six years, he has written an epic, and I'm not using that word lightly, don't worry, I know what it means, I've read my Homer, an epic book about the life and times of Kirkland Lang. It's published today, and Ollie, I'm delighted to say, joins me now from the book's official launch in Birmingham. Ollie? Hi, Steve, how are you? Yeah, fantastic fella. How'd it go today at the launch? It's going very well. We're still going, in fact. Oh. Still, sell, still selling copies, and we've just had the Duran fight on, so, oh. uh, you know, everybody's very positive. Now, what about... Uh, is Kirk, Kirk's not at the launch, is he? No, no. I mean, Kirk, you know, Kirk keeps himself very private these days, sort of mm. understandably. I mean, he hasn't done a, a public appearance, I think, since 2007. Wow. Um, so, you know, and uh, we did well then. We got into the Midlands Area uh, Council Boxing Awards, you know. Um, but he's, you know, he, know, he knows about the book, and, um, you know, he's, he's just... Uh, there's just so much kind of charisma and happiness and joy about Kirk that uh, it's, uh, doing a book, I think, is long overdue, and that's, that's really what I wanted to bring out in the book. Now, a part of the proceeds going to Kirk? All of the profits from the All sale of the, of the book go to, go to Kirk. Well, it's just been a hobby for me, Steve, you know, wow. because... Long any hobby, other... six years of your life! Yeah, but let's be honest, any other hobby I'd had for six years, yeah, you know, point. I would have, I'd be a few quid down, wouldn't I, and, whatever and, I'd and, done, and, and so if I can break even, that's yeah. great. And you wouldn't be looking at a finished product that's so fantastic. First of all, let me just give people a few details. It's called The Gifted One, Kirkman Lang Through the Eyes of Others. It's hardback, 453 pages. 53 fantastic pictures, some of which you will never have seen. Now... It, it's it's eighteen quid. It's not a, it's not available via online booksellers or in bookshops because you lose basically eighty five percent or ninety percent of your money. You can the only way to order this book, okay, is by going to a website. Now I'm going to give the details out here. It's a bit boring, but I'm going to give the details out. It's Oliver Jarrett, and it's O L I V E R J A R R A Double T dot com. OK, go to that site, follow the instructions, follow the details, and order yourself a copy of this quite brilliant book. Now, Ollie, were you a fan of his, or did you sort of, uh, well, sort of I mean, become I, aware I, of him I, later in life, so to speak? Well, you see, I mean, I, I kind of grew up in my, my sort of late, late teenage years, sort of watching him on sports night and, mm. you know, midweek sports special, that kind of thing, when he was near probably near the end of his championship career, yeah. um, late 80s, early 90s. And so when I started getting into all of this and finding out all about him, I mean, I was, you know, amazed to find him uh, winning the ABA title in, uh, in 1972. 72. And, you know, he should have been the Amir Khan of his day. Yeah. Um, because, you know, won that, should have gone to Munich. Um, and, Deserved to go know, to Munich. Exactly. And the amateur boxing politics, you mm. know, meant he didn't go. Yeah, what, um, what I find amazing, Ollie, is you've managed to track down his am full amateur record, and he fights something like three times in the sort of six weeks after the winning the ABA final, and loses, I think, two of the three, which was a really stupid thing to do when you're pushing for an Olympic place. I mean, things have done so much, so, so different back then. Or did he did he realise instantly that he, he had no chance of being selected? Well, I, I think, though, what happened was when, when he won the ABAs, the selectors yep. then said, well, that's not the end of the story. We're now oh, going to yeah, yeah. we're now gonna have Olympic trials and Olympic um, selection yeah. uh, fights. So there was all kinds of matches involving Kirk and Tommy Wright and Vernon Solis, Billy Taylor, all of those guys. Um, but, you know, it was almost as if the results of the ABAs didn't matter. So, yeah, but he, but he never did fight at that stage, Solis and Billy Taylor, did he? So those are the two guys. First of all, Vernon Solis was selected, who was also 17, who Kirk had beat in the ABA finals. He withdraws from an injury, and Billy Taylor then gets the selection. But Kirk, just to point out, hadn't fought either of those two in any kind of round-robin event. 
Well, actually, there was, a, there was yeah, Kirk, well, Kirk had fought, obviously, Solis in the ABA final. In the but, final, um, yeah, but, but yeah, not, not but, um, post-final. Yeah, and, uh, but the thing was, I mean, Solis was all up for being selected, and then he had a tiny bit of legal trouble, basically, yeah. and um, then he was ruled out, and Billy Taylor was in, and so on. So it was, it was just a complete confusion. Complete confusion, which could have been avoided, of course, yeah. if Kirk had been picked in the first place. Uh, let me just, uh, I've got to tell one of the listeners, if you've sort of half heard the name Kirk and Lang, or half heard... The, uh, the you know the fact that you know the gifted one as a as a nickname, if you actually get hold of this book and if you if you're out there googling and YouTubing tonight, so if you Google Curtin and Lang and put in book, you'll be able to track it down and do it that way. That's another way to get to get to Oliver Jarrett's site. But if you if you actually sit down and watch a couple of clips tonight and look at what this guy did, you'll be staggered by the by the amount of big fights he was in and by you know some of the f mistakes he made by just vanishing off off the face of the earth and losing fights he should have won and winning fights he should have lost when you when you sat down and spent time with with uh, Kirk uh, Ollie so uh, with, with Kirk Ollie um, did you find a bitter man or a man just you know uh, at ease with the ways life had ended up I, I didn't. He, he wasn't better at all. I mean, I think the the really touching thing was that um, you know people always say, oh, don't meet your heroes. You'll only be disappointed. Of course not. That's, and, that's um, good advice and, to be honest. And with you. also, you know, I mean, I remembered obviously the, the 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 difficult circumstances he was in when you when you interviewed him and you you know for that for the piece for the of BBC. Short film, yeah. And uh, you know, I uh, when I met him, you know, first in two thousand and seven, he was in a lot better state, you know, than, than, he, than he had been before. But yeah, he'd been he in was, a coma, like, well, two, exactly, two but, weeks but, after I interviewed him, he was pushed off a rooftop. Well, exactly, but, you know, he was, um, you know, he was sort of sparky, enthusiastic, he still had that <sighs> smile about him, that charisma, you know, could still light up the room. And again, you, you talked to him about some things, like you talked to him about Duran and, you know, the ABAs, all of that stuff. And he remembers it like it was yesterday, yeah, he and, did. Um, I agree and, with that, and that was the joy of meeting him, you know. And I, I wasn't disappointed in any way when I met him. It was a wonderful experience. No, and, and, and did so for me. I mean, we made that short film. It's also available on YouTube. Uh, for the BBC, which was so under-marketed by the BBC, I was ashamed to be part of the system for a while. It was disgraceful. Ollie, tell us about the London launch. Tell us when it's coming up. Well, the London launch is this Sunday. It's the uh, the 18th of October. It's in a pub called the Old Red Cow in Smithfield yep. uh, on Long Lane. Um, and, yeah, it's starting, uh, starting at noon, going on till four. And so, because, as, as you've said, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a heavy old book. It is People a blunt, isn't it? Well, exactly. But if people if people want to come along and save themselves the postage cost and also meet, you know, a whole number of other people who are going to be sure. there. Um, and get it signed. You know, um, absolutely, get it signed by all means. Now, and, um, you've just you've generally have a good time because it's a nice pub as well. Yeah, exactly. So. You've only printed 1,200 of these and, and I've, got to, I've, got, I've got to tell people that this book will sell out. And I'm telling you that now. So, a first. And I'm, not, and I'm not printing it again. No, no, no. It's, it's you... the only run. Oh well, I'm no. telling you, it will sell out because yeah. there are for all sports books, three or four hundred people who just buy them anyway because they're sports books. Okay, so that's not taking into account the loyal, uh, the loyal Kirtland Lang fans. Oh, by the way, um, uh, I need another one for my show on Tuesday. Jason's meant to give you 18 quid, and then I'm going to give him the 18 quid on uh, Tuesday. Yeah, Ollie, he, can you he, can you he, arrange he, that? He gave me a call today. I'm, I'm doing a secret postal drop somewhere in Solihull. Oh, the good. Yeah, make, 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 uh, make, uh, listen, you, you'll get paid for that. It's not a freebie. <laughs> no, 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 trust me, it's not. That's for my auction on Tuesday night at the Dubliner in Digbeth. Ollie Lovely. Jarrett, thanks very much indeed for joining us here tonight on BBC London 94.9. Ollie Jarrett there.